Hey everybody, this is Andy and I'm here to talk about insulation, which is a term that we use to describe incoming solar radiation or the radiant energy that is emitted by the sun. That's going to give us daylight and that's going to give us uh, warmth here on Earth. Um, so let's take a look. A couple things to know. So here's the celestial sphere. We have our observer at a latitude that's pretty close to us here at New York City, in New York City. I'm going to start this simulation with an important date, June 21st, which is our summer equinox. Uh, this is an important date because this is the longest day of the year, meaning this is the largest amount of daylight hours we would get in the northern hemisphere. And it's also when the sun is at its highest altitude in the sky. And the higher the sun is in the sky means the stronger the insulation, the more direct insulation that we're going to receive, which gives us warmer weather. And of course, if the sun is out for longer, it's only going to also increase the uh, temperature and create those seasonal changes that we see throughout the year. <clears throat> so June 21st, it's the longest path that the sun is going to take throughout the course of the year. It's going to get the highest at noon, and it's going to travel east to west each day. After the 21st, the days are going to start to get shorter, meaning the, the sun is going to spend less time out and more time below the horizon, and it's also going to move lower at noon, which is the highest point in the day, so it's not going to be as strong as these days go by. So we see a smaller path of the sun, it's getting lower in the sky until our second important date of the year that we're going to hit, which is September 22nd. That's the fall equinox, the autumn equinox. And that means that there is equal daylight hours and night hours. So the sun is going to rise due east on an equinox, directly east at around 6 a.m. And then it'll spend 12 hours, half the day, out. It'll still reach its highest point of the day around noon. It's still going to travel east to west. It's going to set in the west about 12 hours later. It'll go below the horizon. There's our equinox. <clears throat> Into October, November, December, the days. Let's move this back to 12 o'clock noon. Moving into the fall, we're going to have the sun lower in the sky at noon. The path is going to be shorter until we get to our third important date of the year, which is going to be the winter solstice <clears throat> or December 21st. So on this day of the year, for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, the noontime sun is going to be at the lowest altitude it will be all year. So here it gives us the altitude 25.8 degrees. Uh, the sun is going to spend the least amount of time out as well. So here the sun rises at about 7.30 in the morning. And the sun is going to set at about 4.30 in the afternoon. That's even sometimes when you're leaving school in the winter, the sun is like already setting because the days are so short. So on the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere, we get about nine hours of daylight as opposed to the 15 that we got during the June summer solstice. Good news, after December 21st, let's go back to 12 o'clock. The shortest day of the year is over, and as we continue into January, February, the days are gonna start to get longer again. Until another three months go by, we're gonna get to March 21st, coming up to that soon right now, where we have another equinox, it's gonna rise due east, it's going to get to the highest point at noon, and it's going to set due west. And then that will happen in a cyclical manner throughout the course of the year until we get to back to where we came. Let's go back to 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock noon. Go back to where we came, which was June 21st, back to the summer solstice, where the sun is at its highest point point in the sky and it will spend the most amount of time out. Um, just a couple other things to consider when looking at these celestial sphere diagrams. We know that 
um, in the northern hemisphere, we're always going to look south to find the noontime sun, no matter what time it is during the year. As long as you're above the Tropic of Cancer, which is 23.5 degrees north latitude, you can always look south to see the noontime sun. Now, your shadow is always going to go, it's going to be cast behind the object relative to the sun. So if a person were standing here and they were to look to see the noontime sun in the south, then their shadow would be pointing in the opposite direction. It would be pointing north. If the sun is going to travel east to west, so sometimes the regents will ask a question like, what direction will a observer need to look to see their shadow at 5 p.m.? Well, you know that it's south at noon. They would have to look to see the sun. And if it's going to travel to the west, that means that at 5 p.m., well, it depends on the time of year as long as the sun is out. Let's say 3 p.m. Boom. Uh, if it was in the south and it's traveling west, if this sun is in the southwest, well, a person can look to see the afternoon sun to the southwest. They would look to see their shadow pointing in the northeast. Other things to consider is depending on an observer's latitude, the path of the sun, the shape is going to change. So if we were to take someone and put them maybe all the way up in the Arctic Circle or even all the way up at the North Pole, one of the telltale signs that a person is above the Arctic Circle is when you see this path of the sun go around an observer without going below the horizon. That's because the tilt of the Earth is making it so that as much as the Earth rotates, it can't, this, this observer is never going to get out of the daylight. The, the Earth is going to continue to rotate, and that person is going to be exposed to the sun's rays um, for 24 hours. I guess the good side of that is that the sun isn't super high in the sky, so it, the intensity isn't that much, but they still are experiencing 24 hours of daylight. And another telltale sign that someone is at a very high latitude is if you see the sun not out at all. So let's change the day of the year. Sometimes there are some days in the year where people at very high latitudes will not see the sun go above the horizon at all. They're, they'll experience 24 hours of darkness, just like they can experience 24 hours of daylight at a different time of the year. Uh, the shape will also be different if a person is between the tropics. Um, if the person is between the tropics, we're going to see the path of the sun kind of have this parallel look where it's going to actually change its noon noontime position. So in the northern hemisphere, above that tropic of Cancer, we saw how no matter what, at noon, an observer can look south to see the noontime sun. That's actually not the case for anyone that's in between the tropics. The path of the sun is going to, or the position of the noontime sun is going to change throughout the year. It's not just going to always be north or always be south. We'll kind of see it change. And those paths will be parallel to one another as they change throughout the year. One other thing that you can remember that you might see on the regents really expert questions would be if I'm at uh, latitude 23.5, let's change it to north, so that's the Tropic of Cancer, I'm going to see the noontime sun directly above this observer on the solstice. So on June 21st, we can expect to see the noontime sun directly above a person right at their zenith. That would be a person right on that uh, solstice. And same would go for, actually the same thing happens if a person is at zero degrees latitude on the equinox. So on September 22nd, a person that, an observer on the equator could expect to see the noontime sun directly overhead on the September equinox, as well as the March 21st equinox. And just like on the summer solstice, the observer on the Tropic of Cancer had the sun directly over their head 
at 23.5 degrees south, an observer can expect to see the sun directly above their head on the December solstice on that 21st. One other thing, one difference, we said before in a northern latitude, so pretty close to us here in New York, we can always look to the south to see the noontime sun, no matter what time of year, it would always be south. In the southern hemisphere, the opposite would apply. So if I was down here in Australia, I would always look north to see the noontime sun. Let's make sure that we're away from the tropic. So it would always look north no matter what time of year. So that's a difference between the northern and southern hemispheres. In addition to them having opposite seasons, because in June, someone in Australia would be experiencing their shortest day of the year, whereas in December, in our winter, they would be experiencing their longest day of the year with the sun reaching its highest altitude. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Have a nice day.